Hello everyone, Gebatron here. Once again I'd like to thank Sam for the fun little intro. This is a gameplay plus commentary style guide where I'm playing the commander role in the game Hell Let Loose. Here we will dive deep into how I usually play the commander role. However, it's important to keep in mind that there are many different leadership styles, so don't think this is the only way to play it. Some commanders lead from the front line, some focus on logistics. I tend to spend most of my time looking at the map from a safe location. These different styles all have positives and negatives, and we'll talk more about those aspects throughout the video. I'll also cover some mistakes I make, so hopefully you don't have to make them yourself. The commander role can be an intimidating one, especially to newer players, but hopefully after watching this, you'll have the confidence to hop into the role, or even if you are an experienced commander, I hope you can find something useful in here too, maybe gain a fresh perspective. Either way, I do recommend that you have a firm grasp of all of the game's mechanics and know how to deploy commander orders. Check the description for related links. Just a quick disclaimer that this was recorded before Update 9, so you won't be seeing any red zone garrisons and the node mechanics are slightly different, but we don't lose any ground anyway so it's kind of irrelevant. This match takes place right after the match that occurred in the video in the top right hand corner. I don't actually start out playing as the commander. I wanted to be a sneaky recon player, but guerrilla tactics are not my strong suit and I found myself not helping the team at all. We don't have a commander, and while it's possible to win games without one, it's also rare. Usually even a bad commander is better than no commander. After taking a look at the map, I decide that we are in a position to win this with the right leadership, so I change roles to better help the team. So what do I see on the map that makes me think this? Number 1. We won the initial fight for North Pass. North Pass here on Hurtgen is an extremely difficult point to take, as taking it usually means you have to control ground on both sides of the river. 2. Even though we are starting to lose it, I believe we have squads in good spots to defend it. Able Squad has an OP on the east side, while Dog Squad has an OP on the west side. This means we have the ability to pinch the enemy, even if they are currently winning. 3. We have more than one garrison, and they are in pretty good spots. For example, say we lose North Pass. We will still have our Gary in G3 that will allow us to mount a new offensive. We also have a garrison at Jacob's Barn, so a couple squads can defend it without having to run all the way from an HQ. Additionally, we have a Gary in F5. If we hold North Pass, this gives us two advantages. First, we can reinforce the pass from the south, and second, it gives us a place to begin an advance into enemy territory. Four, we also have some armor support near North Pass, which will help immensely. Can anyone hear me? Yeah, yeah. what's up? Alright, dog squad, hold your position. You're gonna get a supply drop. We need a garrison there. Uh, I would recommend against that. We're facing a lot of heavy infantry resistance right now. Doesn't matter. Need a Gary there. Copy that. Just hold, just hold. So I redeploy, and my first order of business is to get Dog Squad to put up a garrison. He's hesitant and says he's facing a lot of resistance, but that's exactly why we need one there. If all that is there is Dog's OP, then if they lose it, we lose access to that whole area. Having multiple spawns here will give them more options and will double the enemy's workload if they want to take that area. This area is important because it is an approach into North Pass, and the more we engage the enemy away from the strong point, the better. Defense is all about depth. My best guess is that the enemy has a garrison in D3, so if they have to first get through Dog, then Able, and then finally King, it will take them a lot longer than if all three squads were stuck in the strong point. The time that this depth buys us will allow us to react. Not only that, but it limits the avenues for which the enemy can attack from. If only holding the strong point, then the enemy has free reign to hit us in the center, as well as from the north and the south. Not to mention that in this scenario we have no way to threaten their northern garrison. I have a place garrison up mark up on the map. Anybody willing to go do that? 
I'm trying to stick a Gary up on uh, North Pass right now. I'm trying to get supplies down first. Still alive, dog? Yes, sir. Nice work. You guys want a recon plane? Sure. I'm, there might be a garrison up on that border. I'm gonna try to see if we can find out. Okay, those supplies are there. Get that garrison built. Make sure it's behind cover. No one responded to my request to build a Gary in F4, so I remove my mark for now. No need to clutter the map. Always manage your marks. Somewhere behind those buildings. Nice work, thank you for doing that. While Dog didn't put the Gary where I would have put it, it's not my job to micromanage these squads. It's my job to manage them, but not micromanage them. I see a lot of commanders making this mistake. It's not my job to second guess that garrison placement, but it is my job to acknowledge that Dog completed a task I gave them and trust that they did it to the best of their ability. Instead of saying something like, why did you put it there, and bring negativity into the match, I thank them and tell them they did a good job. As the commander, you really have control over the vibe of your team. If you are positive, then they will likely be positive too. I know it sounds trivial, but it really does make a difference, and you'll be able to see the positive vibes grow throughout this match. Okay, Abel's having trouble on North Pass. Yes, I am. Okay, you just had an OP go up. You need to help them. Dog squad, you need to push towards way back overlook. We're gonna try pushing forward. Uh, if I, I think there might be a garrison, I'll call for a bombing run once we get a better look. Oh shoot, I just called a recon plane in. Maybe I can soften him up before you get there. So here I call in a recon plane, and this probably isn't the best use of one. Why? Well, I already have a pretty good idea that the enemy is holding these buildings, so why do I need to see what I already know? I could have waited for Dog to find the enemy garrison and used the recon plane to find a weakness in the enemy lines, but it's not the end of the world. Just know that there are different ways to use the recon plane. Bombing run going in. Always announce your air support. This will allow the other officers to check their maps and inform their squad mates of incoming danger areas. You'll notice I hold off on the strafing run as it seems all the angles could put friendlies in danger. Never prioritize your own kill count over friendlies. Now I understand sometimes friendlies don't heed your warnings and maybe wander into a bombing run, but don't make that choice for them. I'm dropping in supplies inside North Pass. Let's get things like nodes built. I call in an airdrop into North Pass and ask for nodes. Some people don't like having nodes in predictable spots like strong points, and most of the time neither do I. But having one set of nodes here will give us some advantages. The first two I mention in game. What kind of nodes do you want on North Pass? Uh, start with manpower, that way support players can get their supplies. Uh, in two and a half minutes instead of five, and then let's get munitions so people can put ammo boxes down. But a less obvious one is that having nodes in and amongst the buildings in North Pass will help shield them from enemy artillery and or bombing runs as well as enemy armor. I recommend that you put at least one set of nodes in a place like this while hiding the majority of them. But when it comes to nodes, sometimes you just have to take what you get. Excellent, munitions just went up. You might squad trying to do it right now, I think. So back to the bombing run. I ended up getting five kills from it, but it doesn't really matter as Dog Squad wasn't able to use it to their advantage. Air support exists to support squads, not to get kills. 
Now, of course, you want to be effective, but I see a lot of commanders calling bombing runs in on troop concentrations with no plan to follow that support up with an assault. I consider this a waste of resources and especially of 10 minutes. Did I get five kills? Yes. Was this bombing run a success? No, because we weren't able to occupy those buildings and push the enemy back. I probably didn't communicate my intentions well enough, but always make sure you have a plan to follow air support with action. Bombing runs can also destroy enemy structures, so sometimes it can be worth it to use them in that way. But make sure your intel is solid first. Someone needs to go help Dog Squad. North Pass, you mean? Uh, we're in their base and we didn't stop them. We stopped like Q. And all that, but they still got the tank. Okay, thank you. Make sure you guys are placing your OPs often. Make sure you're building defenses inside a North Pass as well. If, if anyone has engineers. Command garrison is marked. Enemy garrison is marked. Who said they rebuilt that, it. Yep. Whenever you got your bombing run ready again. You guys need more supplies inside North Pass. Yeah, we need more supplies on North Pass. We can. You want them near your OP? The east or west side of the river? Uh, west side, west side. Abel asks for supplies, and we have a back and forth that could have been avoided had I asked for a supply drop mark. Using these marks cuts down on command chatter and allows you to put the supplies in the best possible location. This is a good tip for squad leaders, too. All right, can here they come. Can you drop supplies uh, where my thing is? Can you drop them there? And I can put a Gary up and you can attack in the, uh, the west. We can't can put a garrison up in enemy territory. You'd have okay, to back I up. I will drop them for you if you back up. I'll put a mark on the map for you. Nah, we have one pretty close. I, I don't think we can put another one down. We have one on the, uh, the F5 marker, so I don't think we can put another one closer. Do you see the mark that I put on the map? Place Garrison? I'll put one there if you want me to. Can you make it there? Yeah, there's like no one over here. Okay, um, it'll be 1 minute 15 seconds on another supply drop. So take your time if you need to. Okay. As I said, this was recorded before update 9, so Fox would not have been able to build a Gary in enemy territory. Had this been after update 9, I would have likely granted his request. However, airdrops are easily spotted, especially behind enemy lines. Anyway, it's very important for Fox to get this E4 Gary up. Right now we have a huge hole in our lines in that area. Having a Gary there will allow us to detect the enemy if they attempt to cross the river south of the pass. Had they done this successfully, we would have likely lost the strong point. Not only that, but it allows us to bring pressure to the overlook. Once that garrison's built, we need people to push from it. So Fox, you're a great candidate for that. Dog, we still need you guys to keep working up there. We gotta make yeah. our way into enemy territory. When you do There's spawn quite on a it, few of them it possibly might be a good idea to you. take that radio tower first and then push them so far we're holding. Fox says something here that is often overlooked. 
He says that taking the radio tower is key to taking the overlook, and I couldn't agree more. Controlling the areas around a strong point allow you to squeeze the enemy and make them split up. It's exactly what we are trying to prevent at North Pass. If Fox can secure the radio tower and Dog can win their fight in the north, we will be able to catch the overlook in a pincer movement and it will give us the advantage. Always try to control the area around a strong point and it will almost always fall. Great job by King Piehead. Fox, do you, do you have a support player in your squad? I ask if he has a support player because if he does, I'd rather he uses their supplies versus a supply drop. Yeah, I don't think so. Like I said, airdrops supplies. are easy to spot and can give positions away. Supplies are coming. I make the same mistake as before and don't ask for a specific mark. What does anyone else want for support? Does anybody need armor spawn? Do we need supply trucks? This garrison up here is not going to work out. They're pushing us hard. Okay, if they're pushing you, they're not pushing North Pass. So just so try to hold it. Right under you. You're high, 666. They're literally right fucking next to you. The other side, dude. Holy shit. Are you serious? Literally right under you. Literally right under you, Pi. Fox, how are you doing? Oh my god. Okay, Fox, they're there. Excellent, thank you very much. Dog Squad, is that tank mark accurate? Uh, I need to confirm that. I was called out by a squad mate. Alright. Fifteen seconds on a supply drop. Do we need more in North Pass? Yeah, we need supplies. Same spot as last time? Yeah, go for it. I say in the same spot here, but I don't actually drop them in the same exact spot. I put them in the same area, but a supply drop right on top of another one just makes it easier for the enemy to destroy them and limits the area that you can build in. They're on their way. As long as it's west of the river. Thank you, dude. <clears throat> you guys are going to have to start pushing out towards Dog Squad. I know it's easier said than done. Hey man, we got we got no posts, that's what matters. The fact that we're still holding up here is a miracle. Yeah, you guys are doing great. Dog is getting frustrated, and I understand. From the ground, it can be hard to see the impact you're having. But right now, Dog is one of the main reasons we are winning this match. Let your squads know the impact they are having. Heavy tank on Mark. Charlie, Fox, you guys have both pushed into enemy territory. Make sure you're putting your OPs down. Nice work, Charlie. The E4 garrison is already paying off as Charlie's squad is now pushing the overlook with Fox. This pressure will hopefully have an effect on our fight at North Pass. What do you the see way back? Marker. Nothing yet. Do you want a recon plane at Waybach? Either way. Fight die for our country! Okay, I sent a recon plane in. It's gonna be followed up by a strafing run. Off 
officers checking maps. Looks like the point at Wayback itself is pretty good. And there's armor east of Wayback on the road. There goes the strafing run, Charlie. Don't cross the street. Once again, always announce your support. It will help friendlies avoid danger and also help them know if it's friendly or enemy support in the air. The strafing run gets a lot of criticism and I tend to agree for the most part. It has a relatively high munitions cost at 50 for what is usually a very small return. It has a short cooldown timer so it can be tempting to use it often. We are doing okay on resources and nodes are going up, so I use it here not to get kills, but in more of an attempt to suppress the enemy and allow our friendly units maybe a slight advantage. As you can see, it doesn't really work out the way I wanted. While I still use a strafing run a time or two during a match, I recommend that you use it very conservatively, or you could find yourself short on munitions early in a match without having gained much from it at all. Dog's in real trouble. Alright, we're gonna start getting up there right now. We're gonna start trying. M squad, what do you look like? Mike squad. Uh, They're basically up us. all over us. Right yeah. Now. They're what was that, all Mike? over us. Okay. It's just two of us, but they we're trying to help dog. They're all over us. Okay, um... All right, well, things are things are looking okay, guys. Things are looking okay. Fox, Charlie, now that you're inside the point, what can you do about OPs? Got to get your squads in there fast. And then keep them in there. Our squad is unresponsive for the most part. It's okay, give them an OP. They'll well, still play on it. We're fighting it out. All right, Dog Mike and is it Abel? Any one of you guys able to get a garrison up? I'll try. Where at? Like, just wherever you can, within 50 meters of those supplies. We have to keep them fighting up there and away from the point, and you guys are doing a great job at that. It is just a grinder up here. I'm sure I'm sure it sucks, but you're doing what you need to do. Now Mike squad has just spawned at E4 and he pulls what is probably the single most important move of the match. Keep an eye on it. All right, guys attacking way back. Try and spread your oh, OPs out a little bit around the south. We've got a bit of a stalemate going here. This isn't ideal, but I'm kind of a conservative commander, so I'm not too worried. We control the center point, so even if it's a stalemate from here on out, we still win the match. Our squads are keeping the fight for the pass off of the point itself, while there is enough pressure on the overlook that I doubt the enemy will be able to commit more to their attack, at least not without losing the overlook first. D squad, can you get a Gary up? Oh, no. Nope. Uh, day, it's that. I don't know why my OP is still up. I think they're just camping it, but they're basically all around. There's also a 75 Dumbo right next to that OP. All right, you guys got to get back into North Pass. Have to give them that for now. F squad, you're about to lose your OP. Yeah, yeah, we're fighting for it. <sighs> D 
A squad, you better fall back into North Pass and get your OP in a better spot. Hey, this is Mike's squad. I killed their outpost and their attacking garrison over here in the north. Should really get some pressure up. Uh, where Dom's hey, that's is. that's excellent, dude. Mike's move from the Gary in E4 will break this stalemate, a move that would not have been possible had Fox not built the garrison in E4. Build garrisons. They give your team options. I'm sure that'll turn the tide. Can you get an OP up in the area? Uh, yeah, actually. Oh, you already do. Uh, work on that garrison next. You got it. So oh, there's a steward up here on Mark. So Somewhere to your northeast. Okay, I see it. Guys attacking way back overlook from the south. You gotta get your squads together and attack as a group. Or or you're no never one, gonna win. No one is responding. So I'm just trying to get a good OP and I'm paid. Okay, sounds good. But thanks so for far, trying. Just thanks for trying. Berries. Gary's up here on the north. Nice work, thank you very much. I can get a garrison on my position if you want one here. Where are you? That's not South a bad of idea. North Pass. It's a bit closer to strong point. Um yeah, uh, you have to be two hundred meters away from any other garrison, so I'll I'll drop some it lets me, put a mark for you. It lets me put it here. Really? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a supply drop. Actually, why don't you give me a mark? That way I put them right where you want them. Mark is up. Is that tank marker active on dog? One second to confirm. Supply drop on route. Thanks, dog. That tank so, marker is old. There was a light tank there, but it was dropping. I'm not sure where it is anymore. Mike, Jig, uh, I need you guys to push southwest. Into way back. Got it. You took down their stuff, you, you gained the momentum, so now we need to take advantage of it. Sounds like a plan. Abel, Nagat, your OPs are pretty hot. Let's talk a little bit about what G-Squad is doing. G-Squad is a recon squad who has taken it upon themselves to do a little light harassing near an enemy HQ. They are also reporting on the assets that the enemy is sending to the front. They are doing a pretty good job and this information can really help us react to the battlefield. Having said that, I'm going to be a little critical on how they are giving us that information. Here he says, Commander, they have a new tank. While it's useful to know that the enemy has armor rolling toward the front, I urge you 
you to be more specific with this info. Is it an M4 Sherman, a Jumbo 75, a Jumbo 76? These details can help the team know how to react. A Jumbo 76 is a real threat to any German armor. An M4 Sherman is less of a threat, so it can really help friendly units plan their actions ahead of time. Now, I don't expect everyone to be an amateur historian, and any info is better than no info, but complete info is better than incomplete info. This will be even more important as the game introduces more types of vehicles in the future. Still a good job by G-Squad, but that's a useful tip if you're trying to improve on some of your play. What do they got? Chairman. Thank you. Here we lose a Gary right in front of me, and I'm sure some of you are being very critical of how I'm just sitting still and looking at my map. We will get into the many things I could have done better towards the end of the video, but I do want to make a point here. You can't help your team if you are dead, and it's hard to direct squads when you're distracted. There are many different styles of leadership. I like to alert squads to hot OPs and garrisons, and I can't do that if I'm not looking at my map. You can't access your orders if you you are dead. Survivability is important for all roles, but especially officers and most importantly the commander. More veteran commanders will be able to multitask, but if you are newer to commanding, make sure you are prioritizing staying alive and staying available over anything else until you get more comfortable with the role. So right now some of you are saying, Gebatron, those garrisons are in terrible positions. They need to be inside the point to be effective, right? While there are occasions where I think it is beneficial to have a garrison inside a strong point, I tend to think it's usually a bad idea. Later there will be an example of a good time to do that, but more often than not, I think it's a bad idea. But this topic deserves its own video though, so stay tuned and subscribe. command yep do you have by chance a tank yeah what do you want where do you want it uh everything's available um just put it on uh j3 um give us a uh, give us a tiger There you go. You got a full squad? I just got one person. Here Baker Squad requests armor. Always give your team what they need, but I have a small piece of advice here. Always know what you want and where you want it before asking for it. This will help limit command chatter and will help you get what you need faster. I also ask him about his squad. This lets me determine if he's a solo tanker or not. Check the links below to learn more about solo tanking. He says he has a squad mate, so I don't see a problem here, but had he been solo, I likely would have asked in command chat if anyone was willing to join him and if not then requested he maybe take a lighter more agile and cheaper piece of armor to the front i'd ultimately leave the decision to him though sometimes solar tankers know what they're doing sometimes they don't sometimes you just have to gamble i need somebody to push from the north with mike squad nagat squad can you make it over there a and d squad how's the defense and north pass look 
Another thing you may have noticed I'm doing is calling squads out by their name. This helps people know when you are talking to them and who you're talking about. Give your squads tasks by name. This limits miscommunication and allows you to delegate responsibility specifically. Asking for volunteers works sometimes, but most often you will not get what you need. Call them out by name. Fuck, uh, I'm gonna smoke walk you in there. There's a north pass. Okay, you guys lost your OPs. Abel, you gotta get one up real quick. We need some people to fall back to north pass. We're done now. Available to move into North Pass. We're gonna lose it, guys. Someone speak up. We'll try to. Okay. Try to get Charlie too. Thank you. As the commander, you need to know what's going on. Be direct. Get people to communicate with you. Yet understand that they have their squads to also communicate with. This just simply took too long for my comfort, so I get direct. You're the commander, and sometimes you do need to take command. But keep in mind that no one likes a tyrant. Here, Abel and Charlie's squads answer the call, and we immediately regain control over North Pass. We're defending. If you want, um, if anyone wants to join... It's hard to hear, but Mr. CJ Mike, the Baker Squad tank commander, is asking if anyone wants to join his squad. I love this. A full tank crew can give you an edge over a depleted enemy tank crew. I do highly, highly recommend that you use a microphone while in an armor squad, however. I'll leave a link in the description about microphones and hell let loose. But while we are on this topic, I really, really don't recommend playing the commander role if you don't have a mic. As a matter of fact, most servers even have a rule against this. I give the same advice for all officer roles and for armor crews. Commander, did their tank just come back to, to chase us? <laughs> Thank you very much for keeping it occupied. Every minute it's not the front line is great. There's tank in their base now. They're coming from the south and the west of North Pass. There's infantry south on both sides of the river of the strong point. My yeah. Panther is literally Swiss cheese. You guys are starting to take way back overlook. Make sure you get OPs up in the area. Nice work pushing in there, Mike. Yep, we got North Pass pretty se um, secured. Alright, push west out. Gotta get that Gary back up. You guys are doing great work. Let your squads know. I need some markers on Overlook. Show me which trench they're in. Now let's talk about artillery. Here we have Blood, who I regrettably haven't been communicating with. I'm honestly not very experienced at having arty support as a commander, and I think it's usually best coordinated at a squad level. But anyway, Blood has been doing a good job of using the team's marks in conjunction with his own marks to lay down fire. His support is no doubt one of the reasons our infantry was able to move into the overlook. If you have someone who knows what they are doing on artillery, don't make my mistake and make sure you communicate with them. Encourage your team to communicate with them and keep them informed about your resource situation. Check the description below for a resource guide. Also, I could have went back to the artillery and either loaded for blood, increasing his rate of fire, or got on my own gun and increased our volume of fire. I've played with a lot of good commanders who contribute in this way, so always keep in mind that this is an option. You want recon, you're saying? Nah, they can just regular market. They're all over there. Let's move over to it. Okay. Let's 
So, uh, when's the next video? Boy, I'm dragging my feet. I'm recording this. Guys, I got a supply oh, drop. I got a supply drop coming into way back. As soon as we take it, start building. Get a Gary up right away. I think they're coming in northwest and north pass. I'm not sure. Okay, they're about to get screwed here. So this is one of the few situations I don't mind a garrison being built inside a strong point. That being, immediately after taking a point, and especially past the center strong point of the map. This will allow fallen north pass defenders to move up quickly, but even more importantly, it will allow me to move up quickly. As the commander, I have the unique ability to remove garrisons remotely via commander orders and to remove them physically. No matter who placed it, the commander can remove it, while squad leaders can only remove the ones that they placed. This will allow me to relocate quickly and establish more appropriate garrisons faster. I don't get around to it this match, but it was my intent in asking them to build inside the Overlook strong point. Okay, Able Squad, do you see my place garrison mark on the map? West of you? No, I'm dead, sorry. Oh, no problem. Nice work, guys. Way to take Waybach and get that Gary up. Do you want Able on Waybach? Where are you now? Right now my squad's on North Pass, just fucking around. No, I want you guys to move from North Pass, or North Pass West to the garrison mark. I got you, I got you. Here I get team killed. Keep this in mind, but we will address it a little later. Also, someone just team killed me. Whoever team killed Gebatron, ask your squads. That was not smart. Uh, Commander, their, their tank is moving. Two, two tanks. Moving where? To uh, the northeast? B3. Yeah, should be. I don't know. They just drive away. Uh, they're, they're not driving yet. For, for some reason, someone's trying to start a vote kick against you. Gibbatron. Oh, oh do you guys think I'm doing a bad job? Not really, no. No, I'm not confused. I was clicking. As long as you're live and talking, and I think we're fine. Now a vote kick. This isn't good. Someone doesn't have confidence in my abilities. As such, I ask the squad leaders if they think I'm doing a bad job. I don't get any negative feedback, so all is good, but don't be surprised if this does happen to you too, even if you are doing a good job. If you don't get kicked, then keep up the good work and find out what everyone needs. If you do get kicked, then try to use the experience to figure out what went wrong. Maybe you got trolled, maybe you need more experience. Try to turn the negative into a positive and learn from your mistakes, but definitely don't give up. Okay, Mike Squad, you're gonna get some supplies. Where do you want them? We need a garrison to threaten Mausbach approach. I probably pronounced that wrong. So Mike Squad is getting supplies. Airdrops are easily seen by the enemy, but I have confidence that our team can use the trench system there to defend this new garrison. Oh, uh, see. Uh, hold on, let me range out the ears. Thank you for doing that. Under, there's one tank, like, where I point. And on your mark? One, another one in the base. Um, G point. Okay. Yeah, he's moving down the road, away from me. I see we have a tank in the area, you guys wanna... Yeah, tank, you about to get on him. Work with him, he's a solo tanker, so help him out. Here G-Squad's intel really pays off. They report enemy armor moving towards the Overlook from their marker. Not only are we able to communicate this info to Charlie's squad, but also to our friendly armor here. This allows them to react accordingly. Go support him. I don't... I don't, I don't have anything in my troop to support him. 
radio. Can you drop supplies on me? Sure can. Thank you. Hey, Kingpin, Here is that trench hot right in front of you? Appreciate it. H squad, the garrison in your area is hot. Please clear it. Abel, your outpost is hot as well. Yep, I'm there. Send Raycon. Here, this right here. This is the guy who team killed me earlier. He team killed me because I wasn't spawning a supply truck for him. I didn't spawn it because I wasn't paying attention to text chat, and this is how he requested it. So some lessons here. Number one, as a commander, try to glance at text chat from time to time, because if you're not, you could be shorting yourself. Number two, don't team kill. Ever. Number three, if you have a microphone, why aren't you using it? All of this could have been avoided if you just would have asked in voice chat for a supply truck. Hell, you could have had 10 supply trucks by now. If you have a microphone, use it. I'm not calling this player out, as I'm sure they learned from it, and they helped me learn from this experience too, but make sure you learn from it as well. Here he doesn't respond, so he doesn't get his recon plane. Use your mic. Where do you want it? Over the approach? Is anybody willing to go south out of Weybach to get a garrison up on my mark? Surround that point with garrisons. But, yeah, I'm done. Fox, you actually have a OP in the area. Would you be willing to do that for hey, me? Man. What's up, dudes? Uh, I can't do that. Okay. But it needs some time. No, G Squad. You don't have to do it. F Squad. Up I'm sorry, I was fighting. What did you say? Mike, how's what that garrison want? coming? What oh, do you want to spot? F, I want you to put a garrison up on my mark. South of Waybook, way back overlook. Alright, garrison's up. So okay, that's gotcha. place, but Thank you very much, Mike. Tiger, back away from that truck. You're gonna. There's a satchel on that truck. Hey, uh, Commander, can you call in support supplies to the repair station? Uh, right. yeah, not right now, but in two minutes you can have them. Here, the engineer, that fellow, communicates with me directly via local voice chat. This is excellent. Lots of times, engineers will be trying to build things before rejoining with their squads, so make sure you are available to aid these types of players by utilizing local chat. Alright, you're good now. Alright, F squad, hey, uh, those USA supplies are coming. Do you have supplies? Yeah. I'm gonna put them down and want to build a repair station. Did someone recently smoke this location, or is this empty smoke? Yeah, sorry guys, I was mostly looking at my map, but uh... Yeah, I'll get supplies here right away, you guys can build a bunch of shit. Sound good? Yeah, sound good. Fifty seconds on supplies, guys. Copy that.
Squad, how's that, uh, how's that garrison building going down there? Yeah, if they find a space that's, uh... meters away. Did I drop? Like right on Did I drop the supplies too close? Bro, he just bombed me. I'm sad. I didn't bomb you. I said they. Uh. Command, on your next supply drop, can you give us one over on the dog supply marker? B3. Boy, I'm not the top right corner of B3. No? I'll report, I'll make it again. Oh. Okay, this is no, no cap, a little okay. questionable, but it's down. The garrison inside Overlook is hot. Oh, you guys cleared it, nice. Dog, why do you want supplies up there? We're gonna try to get an AT gun. Oh, no problem. You got it. Minute 40 seconds. Sorry, it's so long. That's good. We're gonna try to clear out the area. The reason I asked Dog Squad why they want supplies is because at the time this was recorded, you were not allowed to build garrisons in enemy territory. Like I said, update 9 changes, but he wants to build an AT gun. AT guns are so overlooked in Hell Let Loose. Here, not will they only be able to support friendly armor on the road, but they will be able to fire on enemy infantry west of the approach, greatly helping our advance. It helps that we have plenty of munitions, as AT rounds do cost munitions. Excellent work by Dog Squad. You got the guys in place to put it up? You know, you need an AT guy and someone with a hammer. We got that covered. Excellent, thank you. Enemy scout on my F marker. Able tank marker is very accurate. Okay guys, our garrison in C3 is hot. Mike, you're in a position to do something about it. I'll try to. 40 seconds on supply drop, dog. Copy. You guys are doing great, by the way. Slowly pushing them back. F squad, what's the story on that recon vehicle? Uh, it's still up. Uh, I'm trying to get AT to spawn and figure out. Excellent. Supply drop is incoming, dog. It's moving up the road towards the uh, radio tower. Sounds good, thank you. Hey, Commander, can you spawn a tiger at middle HQ? You bet. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank the engineers. We have over a thousand fuel resources. Nice work, guys. Hey, um, can I have one last tank? This guy's on Where do you want it? Um, J3. I know it's... No word. What do you want, a panther? Yeah, I just give us a... Okay, there's your panther. Hey, Gabe. Look behind you, taking every OP. 
Here Blood alerts me to some impending danger. This is excellent map awareness by him, and I head back to the Overlook to help with defense because of it. Great company. It's an enemy steward on Mike Parker B3. Well, let's get somebody to take this out. Sorry guys, dealing with the enemy radar right now. Right now. Mike squad, as you guys die, can you spawn on your outpost and fall back into Wayback? Sure thing. Thank you. Right in the face. Mike, I hope you have AT. Nice work. Here's a pro tip. Change roles to meet the situation's needs. Remember that fellow? The engineer who asked for supplies through local chat earlier? Well, now he's anti-tank and makes short work of this enemy recon vehicle that just took my face off. While I don't condone role swapping for the sake of exploiting the game's mechanics, I do 100% encourage you to switch roles as the battlefield changes. Iron Cross to that fellow. Thank you, sir. That was excellent. You really saved the day, man. Iron Cross. Thank you. I was just lucky that my squad didn't have an AT guy. No such thing as luck, soldier. Who needs a supply drop? Nice work guys, we almost got him. Hey G-Squad, are you still doing the recon thing? Commander, Commander. Sir. Uh, I don't know, I'm the new commander of the G-Squad. The original commander f fucked up. Okay. Uh, are you still recon? No, my sniper dead, and we, uh... He was a tanker before. Commander, commander, we need a uh, tank, tank support. Do you want tank support? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're that. coming. Thanks. We have tanks moving through North Pass right now. It's not but a great map for tanks, though. We have one enemy tank over here. We can push.
Nice work, guys. Keep it up. We're just locking down the right flank. The new side with this AT gun. Thanks for the supplies. You got it, man. It's not often you hear a squad wants to build an AT gun. And we got plenty of munitions. We, we are just lighting that place up right now. Guys, this was a pretty, pretty good victory. Nice work to everyone. Good job, Commander. Thanks, but you guys, everyone did it. Yeah, like I said, I'm recording this, so I'll probably make a video out of it. Victory. I wish I could have commended multiple people here, as all these guys were great team players and contributed to this victory. Let's look at my personal stats first here since they're less interesting than the team stats. A couple stats I do want to point out, the most important ones being average life and longest life. Staying alive allowed me to be aware and be available. I know I keep harping on it, but you are no good to your team dead. Supplies delivered, 13. This isn't a record-breaking number, but it's important to give your squads what they need in order to do the things you ask of them. It's much harder to get people to build garrisons, build nodes, and other structures if there aren't any supplies available for them to build them. Don't make things any harder than they have to be, and you'll usually find that squads are more receptive to your wishes. Whether you're delivering supplies via airdrop or via truck, if a squad has to spend time and effort procuring their own supplies, they are far less likely to build the things you need. Structures built is only four. In my opinion, this number is too low. I absolutely should have built a couple more garrisons than I did. The team did a great job, but I should have helped alleviate some of their workload by contributing more in this aspect, especially because I am an experienced commander who is capable of multitasking. I still urge newer commanders to prioritize staying alive and making sure they aren't distracted, but make sure you are contributing to the work on the field as well. Now to the team stats. Let's start by looking at our resources and talking about another one of my mistakes. I called in very little support other than supply drops. Props to our engineers for doing work out there, but I left way too much on the table. With this sort of resource availability, I should have been more liberal with my commander orders. While I don't encourage you to be wasteful, I absolutely should have used more of these resources, especially munitions and manpower. I have to give props to our armor crews though, as they simply didn't request many vehicles. This tells me they were doing a good job of staying alive. There is a campaign mode that is eventually going to come to Hell Let Loose, and my best guess is that this mode will allow us to carry accumulated resources from one battle to the next. So while being this conservative with resources may be advantageous in the future, it didn't do us any good here. A couple more recon planes, a couple more bombing runs, maybe an airhead. Being more liberal with support could have helped us win this game more more quickly. Let's look at the support scores. Update 9 has changed how this part looks a little, but here we have 6 squads with over 1200 support score. I think that's pretty good. This tells me that everyone was doing things to help the team, from building garrisons, building nodes, to managing their OPs. Obviously I can't take credit for their hard work, but being direct with these squads, making them aware of proximity warnings, giving them the supplies they needed to do these things, etc., all may have helped them, which is my responsibility as commander.
Now on to defense scores. 10 squads, all with defense scores over 1,000. This is fantastic. I'm a firm believer that you have to have a tight grasp on your territory before you can truly threaten and take the enemy's territory. So having this many squads willing to help achieve this is almost unheard of. Once again, I can't take credit for this great teamwork, but I did make the defense at North Pass a top priority, and I think that is reflected at least a little in the scores. Having said that, we also had six squads with over 900 offensive points. This lets me know that while we kept a tight grip on our territory, we also were putting pressure on the enemy, keeping ourselves from becoming one-dimensional. Once again, all credit goes to these guys for doing real work, but as commander, it's your job to try and balance your team's attack and defense appropriately. And finally, the combat scores. Remember when Dog Squad built that AT gun? Let this be a lesson to us at how effective a well-placed anti-tank gun can be in both anti-tank and anti-personnel roles. Also remember Charlie's squad with the SL that had a bunch of people who weren't communicating in his squad? Absolutely respectable numbers across the board for his squad, which I'm highlighting to show you how leadership can have an effect on even non-communicative squads. Charlie SL was communicating with me and giving me the impression that he was giving his squad direction even if they weren't responding to him. He was on top of his OP game and that allowed his squad to stick together and be effective in the face of adversity. I do highly recommend you play this game with a mic, but here is a great example of how a good squad leader can have a positive impact on his squad. If I had to describe my command style, I would say that I'm conservative, yet effective. Firm, but not a tyrant. This doesn't mean that this has to be your command style. Maybe you want to lead more from the front. That's fine. I would just urge you not to take unnecessary risks. Maybe you want to drive a supply truck or provide artillery support. That's great, but I do urge you to not get distracted. All styles, even mine, have weaknesses and strengths. As long as you are aware of these things, you can use that knowledge to help counteract your weaknesses and press your strengths. Always be willing to grow and learn, and you'll do just fine. Don't get discouraged by a loss or a bad game. This game went really well because everyone was playing as a team, and I used this video because there was a lot of good things happening. But it is only a guide, and I lose plenty of games too. I think that's it for this one. Did you learn something new? Did you see something you didn't like? Let us know in the comments. Make sure you ask any questions you may have in the comments, and I'm serious about that. I like interacting with you, and learning about Hell Let Loose is what this channel is all about. I'd like to thank everyone who was playing in this match. You all made for a great experience, and I had a lot of fun. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Check the description for related links, including a link to purchase Hell Let Loose on Steam. There's a PayPal link down there too if you'd like to support the channel directly. Thanks for the continuing support, and I'll see you in the next video.